and uh, I hope you come back. I hope you bring somebody with you. I'll promise you, I'll do everything. And I do want to say, I was going to preach tonight what I'm preaching tonight, but I, I, I didn't get it all together, and I believe that'd be for the Lord for tonight. So if you want to hear it, you'll have to be here. Amen? <laughs> Amen. And uh, I know that Facebook is what a lot of people do today, but I'm going to tell you this much. Facebook is not church. Amen. That's right. Facebook and church. I don't care what none of them say. I got a crowd that follows me. I wish they'd follow Jesus. And if they followed Jesus, I'll promise you they'd be in church. Amen. Amen. And that's just how simple and plain that is. Uh, you start turning your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. I do want to say it's an honor. I never met your pastor until yesterday. I told him to be here at 10 o'clock. He finally got here at 1030. Amen. Amen. <laughs> But his daughter pretty well warned me right up front, like he, he he's not early for nothing, amen. <laughs> and uh, but uh, uh, but I do I appreciate this, amen. I, I told him put him on Facebook, said we'd love to come. We're gonna what we well, you know, we was gonna be in the area. I had another church in Indiana. We're gonna have me, but he forgot to write it down. And uh, but those things happen. I don't uh, I don't let that stuff get me down the more. You say why? Well, Jesus is in control, right. and Jesus has never failed me, amen. He's not going to fail me, and uh, I, I, I just want to. I just want to continue to attempt. I seen somebody wrote something on Facebook, and I wish I'd have copied it because I would like to share it. But then I'm not going to get it word for word. But uh, well, actually, I don't even know what I was going to say, so it don't matter. Amen. <laughs> yes, Lord, did want me to say it. Amen. Matthew chapter 13. When you get your place, if you can, you will and able stand for the reading of the Word of God. Matthew chapter 13. Start reading in verses 13. Verses, four, verses 1. And the Bible says, The same day when Jesus went out, the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat in, in the, by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when the sower so when the sower and when the and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. Up. Some fell upon stony places where they had no not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, which they had no had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, went up was up, they were scourged, and because they had no roots, there they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them, and others fell into the ground and uh, brought forth fruit, and some a hundredfold, and some sixty, some thirtyfold. It, who hath he, who hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Lord, I pray just for a little bit, you'd lead, you'd guide, you'd direct. The Lord, you'd have your will and way in this service this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. I want to say this. Listen, hey, uh, revival, listen, I hope somebody gets saved this week. That'd be a great thing. But that's not what revival is. Revival is when somebody that's a little bit cold and indifferent, maybe a little backslid a little bit or whatever, and they come back to their first love. Amen? Amen. You remember over there, uh, Doc David in Psalms 51, he told, uh, he said, Jesus, he said, Lord, I want my first love back. And I didn't realize, I didn't see the thing yesterday until, I seen the theme, I mean, not the theme, but I seen that he had it recorded, but then I seen yesterday, and so I will say something to you. We all better fall back in love with Jesus. Right. Amen? We all better fall back in love with Jesus, but we look at these scriptures in verses 9, let me see if here, but the wind's going to take my pages away here, but look in verses 9 of chapter 13, and here's what it says. Who hath an ear to hear, let him hear. I think about the day and hour we're in. You know, the Bible, Timothy told, Paul told Timothy, he said, listen, hey, you just better be getting ready for these things. We're living in perilous times. And if you look up the word perilous times, what that means is, is we're in dangerous times. Right. And there's nowhere, no doubt, in the part of dangerous times. But I want to say something to you. Hey, we better be opening up our ears. We better get those spiritual Q-tips out and start cleaning our ears out and start paying attention to what God's got to say. Here's what I'm seeing going on in our churches today. I'm not. I listen. Hey, listen. The world, the the the, the drunk in Salem is doing exactly what the drunk's supposed to be doing. What? Being a drunk. Amen. 
and anything else you want to name that they're doing, but the church people, people that are saved, people that come to church every week, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Right. You start reading over there in the book of Revelations and you start reading about the churches and, and listen, hey, they was doing the right things that they were supposed to be doing, but for the wrong reasons. Right. Amen? Amen. And I want to say something to you. Hey, I'm not saying that's going on here. I know this is a small church just getting back going on everything. But if you claim to be saved this morning, let me tell you something. You better start falling in love with Jesus. And then when you fall in love with Jesus, you better start paying attention to what he's got to say. I, I was dealing with a guy the other day. My wife gets mad at me. I try to help people. But I figured out one thing right quick. Like, Jesus didn't help everybody. And I'm sure that's not going to happen with me. Amen? But I do, I would like to help somebody, but I, I found out something with Facebook. Here's what my, I don't have Facebook friends, I have Facebook critics, amen. amen. And I got people on there, listen, if I put on Facebook, Jesus saves, Jesus loves me, something like that, I get very few scripts, I get very few likes, which I'm not doing it for likes, I, I'm just letting people know that Jesus loves me, amen. amen. But I will say this much. If I put something on there that, that the world says today or the church today says you're either legalistic or you're wrong or you do I get thousands of likes and I get a lot. I get a listen, hey, don't follow me if you don't want to follow what's going on in this world, because I don't mind saying it. Amen. There used to be a preacher in North Carolina, Carl Lackey. I don't know whether Brother Heeks had ever heard of him or not, but he used to get up and get up on Sunday mornings, and whenever he found out about it, somebody doing something they wasn't supposed to be doing on Saturday night, he said, if you've got the guts to do it, I've got the guts to preach against it. Amen. Amen. He had not only named the sin, he named the sinner. <laughs> Amen. And I'm going to tell you right now, that is scriptural, because when you go over and look at John the Baptist, John the Baptist named the sin and the sinner. Amen? I'm going to tell you something. I don't hate the sin. I don't hate the sinner, but I do hate the sin. Amen. You say, why? Because I know what sin's doing to him. He said something about that in Sunday school. Listen, I'm going to tell you, Sunday school's important. You need, to, you need to be here if it's possible. Amen? You say, why? You're going to learn something in Sunday school you don't learn at 11 o'clock. And then you're going to come back at 6 o'clock whenever there's uh, uh, something that you didn't learn at 11 o'clock. Amen. Amen. Is that about all right? I'm just going to tell you this much. I wouldn't tell, I, I, I say this on Facebook, I don't want to be mean, I don't want to be ugly, but don't tell people you love Jesus and then don't, uh, don't act like it. Right. Amen. Amen. If you love me, and my statement was last week when I put that on there and I got ridiculed by this one fella, I finally got rid of him. Amen. I, I told him he needed to get saved. I don't mind telling people that. Amen. Amen. You, if you, listen, if you, I, t I told my children, I, I told other people, listen, don't ask me to do your funeral and, and then you get me up there and, and me, expect me to sugarcoat what you've done because I'm not going to do it. I don't care if it's a funeral home. I don't care if it's a church. I don't care if it's under the tent. I'm not going to lie for nobody. Amen? Amen? Listen, hey, you want somebody to preach you into heaven? Act like you're going there. Right. Does that make sense? I'm just saying, hey, we ought to open up our eyes and, and, and quit listening. Hey, and, and the title of the message is, Who are you listening to this morning? Go to Genesis chapter 3 real quick, like. I got plenty of time. We don't, listen, I'm, I'm not going to let you out before 12 o'clock. Amen? That's the Baptist rule. Look at Genesis, I mean, Genesis chapter 3, 3, verses 1. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord hath made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And, of, and, and the word, and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the garden, but of the, of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat, shall not eat it, eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the days ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, and knowing good and evil. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know how much good we know, but there's a lot of things, evil things we know. Amen. Right. Amen. <laughs> and the woman saw that the fruit was that the tree was good for fruit, good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her and did eat. Now I want to say this: Do not listen. Do not ridicule uh, Adam and Eve because of why? You say, well, what if, what would you have done if you'd been there? <coughs> Amen. 
And then you think about something else. You remember Eve, whenever he was starting in chapter 2 there. You know what God did? God made Adam and Eve in the image of God. Is that the Bible? Amen? And I want, you know what that means is that Adam and Eve was perfect. They was perfect people. They was no problems in them. But then the devil came by. Guess what? Eve was listening. A perfect person was listening to the devil and got deceived. And if she can be deceived and Adam can be deceived, don't think we can't be deceived. Amen? I mean, listen, people are quitting church every day. People are getting out every day. You know why people say they get out of church? Well, you, somebody hurt my feelings. Some, the preacher didn't even shake my hand. The preacher said something that I didn't like. I was talking to a friend, uh, another preacher friend of mine the other day, and we was talking about a friend of mine down in New, uh, Arizona down there. I'm not in Arizona, but Arkansas. And uh, he had a lady in the church. I'm in a church running about 50 or 60 people. And the preacher got up and preached what thus saith the Word of God. Hey, if your preacher will preach what thus saith the Word of God, it's probably going to get it under your skin. Amen? You, you're probably not going to like it. But I'm going to tell you what you can do. You can either get it right or get it wrong. Right. I've got a statement that I made here very soon. I've been probably doing, making this statement for about, uh, about a month now. If you want to stand before God in your condition, I thank God ought to allow you to do it. Mm -hmm. And it don't matter whether it's right or whether it's wrong. Amen? Am I making sense this morning? Yeah. I'm just trying to tell you, listen, hey, Eve was listening to the wrong person, and what happened? She got kicked out of the garden. She's no longer a per she's no longer perfect. She is a sinner. She is out there. Hey, listen. Hey, chapter two said that she was na they was naked. It wasn't a shame. Come to chapter three, they done got a shame. Right. Amen. I wish some God. I wish some people would get ashamed of their sin today. Amen. You know what I see today on Facebook? Listen, hey, everybody's against everybody's sin except for their own sin. Right. I'm going to tell you what I need to do. I need to hate my sin more than I hate my wife's sin. Amen? I need to hate what I'm doing and wrong and, 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 in the eyes of God more than I do anybody else. Right. Amen? I'm just telling you, Eve listened to the wrong person. And I'm going to tell you something. There is a lot of so-called people. Listen, hey, the world's blinded because they don't know what salvation is, but the church is blinded because they want to be. There's, there's, you read, you go to reading about the ear of the Bible. Reading there, the Bible says there's eyes that they cannot see and they have ears that they cannot hear. People come to church with their mind somewhere else. Amen? Amen. They don't have their mind on church. They don't have a desire to be in church. They're just there because if I don't, if I don't show up for church, my preacher's going to text me. He's going to come by my house. He's going to see what I'm doing. So i got to show up for church. I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't come to church for uh, Brother Hicks. I didn't come to church for you. I come to church for Jesus Christ. Amen. You say, why? Because that's who I want to please. That's who I'm going to stand before one of these days. I'm just asking you this morning, are you listening to the devil? He can make you. He can make you. He's deceived a lot of people. Amen? He's deceiving people like crazy. John chapter 8 over there, verses 31 and 32, it says that he came to destroy and it's John chapter 10, not John chapter. And he come to destroy. Guess what? He's still destroying people today. He's still wanting to destroy the world. He's still wanting to see sinners go to hell. He's still, hey, but I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think the devil's having to do much work right now. Man. See, I want to tell you something. Eve, Eve listened to the devil. And the devil did come to Eve. You remember this right now. The devil will come to you and tell you, well, it's just not going to be worth coming to the tent meeting this week. It's really just not going to be worth it. That old preacher's going to get up there and slob slobber and spit and yell, amen, and I'm just going to say the same thing over and over and over. It's not worth it. Hey, I'm going to tell you what. It, it's not the devil's decision. It's yours. Because right, right. Eve made the decision. The devil come to her. The devil made it desire. The devil, the devil made it look good. And she desired it. But who do you blame it on? Now, she blamed it on the devil. I blame it on self. When I do something that I don't shouldn't do and it's come because the flesh or the devil has come before me, guess what? I can blame it on the devil. I can blame my wife. I can blame my children. I can blame the world. I can blame the church. But guess what? The blame falls on Gary. Right, man. Amen. Am I making sense this morning? I'm just asking you, who are you listening to? Because there's a lot of there's a lot of so-called people that say they're saved. They're listening to the devil. 
Well, you know what? It's Wednesday night. You've worked all week long. You've tired. You're, you're at the recliners a whole lot better. Amen. Who are you listening to this morning? Go to. Let's see here. Go to. Well, all my pages is turned to. Go to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18, look in verses 2. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but he is but but that his heart may discover itself. What about this? Who are you listening to when it comes to yo-yos? Now I'm, you know you know what a yo-yo is? You have to make it, you have to make that thing go up and down. You know what? We got a lot of yo-yos in our churches today. Amen. I was in a church here not long ago. I'm not going to say where it was at. No word, which you you know it, it was in Illinois as far as I'm going to go. And, and we and I found out there was a person in that church that was listening to somebody called Steve Anderson. If you've never heard of Steve Anderson, let me tell you something. You better stay as far away from that man as you possibly can. Amen. Amen. That man, I'm gonna be honest with you. I wouldn't have if he was standing here today. I wouldn't. He'd have a problem with me, but that's okay. I I, I don't have to. I, I'm gonna tell you. I don't believe the man's even saved. If he believes salvation by what he said, and I've listened to some of his videos so I can figure this man out, if he believes what he says, he's going to hell. But you know what? We got a lot of people today, Sunday morning, oh, we'll turn on the religious channel. You know what's on them religious channels? False prophets. Amen. I mean, listen, hey, I've got good preachers, that I, and if I name some of them, I can't do that anymore because it offends everything, offends people anymore. I shouldn't be, a, I should realize I'm going to stand before God, but we got people on there, and listen, hey, we got a guy that's dead now. He used to be what they call the Baptist Pope. You know, we want to say how bad the Catholic Pope is. Well, the Baptist has got a Pope. And they bow down to the man. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm just going to tell you something. Not every not every church has got a steeple. Not every place that says Baptist is worth going to. Amen. That's right. Amen. You say, well, listen, I, hey, this has got to be a good church. It says Baptist. Which now we got a lot of them ashamed of being Baptist. Now they're taking the sign off. Yep. Some people have a problem with that. I don't. If you ain't going to be Baptist, take your sign off. Amen. 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 They say, well, what about Baptists? Well, I just want to say this much. My forefathers brought Baptists over here, and it, it does have a religious rights. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I don't got time to go into all that. I'm sure Brother Hicks has done that, or he'll do it in the part of the finding that. Listen, hey, it does have a history. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. But we got people, listen, hey, they listen to anything that is out there, and they just think, it, hey, it mentions God, so it's got to be good. Yeah, well, whenever they call God's last name, which God don't have a last name, but when they say that, surely you don't think that's good. Amen? Listen, a bunch of yo-yo, get them up there and listen. We just bring anything in here, entertainment. I had a preacher, I had a church in West Virginia. They told me, said, Brother Hawkins, we got to get you and your family to come over here and entertain us. I looked at my wife and I said, I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> I don't know, entertain, listen now, I, I'm, not, I'm not putting on a show. I didn't drive to Illinois for you to see Gary Hawkins. I want you to see Jesus Christ, amen? amen. Uh, that, sir, that we would see Jesus. Amen. You say, why? Because that's who it's about. It ain't about Gary Hawkins. It ain't about Cornerstone Baptist Church. It ain't about Brother Kenneth, I mean, Brother Hicks. It's about Jesus. Right. And I'm going to tell you right now, you better make sure you got the right one. Mm -hmm. Amen? These preachers get up there and listen, hey, Kenneth Copeland, I'm going to mention him. I don't have a problem. You know what Kenneth Copeland is? You know what people have done? They have given money to that man, and he bought an airplane. He got on Facebook not long ago. You say, you follow him? I said, no, I don't follow him. Ads come up, and people have bought him an airplane. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much an airplane costs. I don't even believe in airplanes. I believe the Bible says, lo, I'm with you. Amen. <laughs> so I ain't buying an airplane. Amen. F-350 is as fast as I want to go, about 80 miles an hour, amen. <laughs> but we listen to people like that, and they snicker us in, and we start giving money to them. Any of you remember Benny Hinn? 
You know what Benny Hinn did? Now listen, man, he probably, his wife probably had it worse off than his dog did. His dog had a dog house with an air conditioner in it. And I almost want to be his dog. Amen. <laughs> Especially when it's 100 degrees. Amen. But we listen to people like that. But hey, when a preacher will get up and proclaim what thus saith the word of God and preach the death, burial, and resurrection, we get mad about it. I ain't going back to that church. He talked about my sin. You know why? Because he cares about you. Right. I mean, if any, if, if listen, hey, if all of those preachers, healing, healing preachers, I knew a guy one time. I went to church with a guy one time, and he had the polio, something polio, your legs, and this is with your legs, I guess. And he couldn't walk, and he went to one of those. Uh, he went to one of those healing services. They wouldn't even let him in the gate. That's proof enough right there, amen? amen? But if they can heal all these people, I'm sure right here in Salem, Illinois, there's probably a hospital where people need to be healed, amen? There's probably a nursing home where people can be healed. I'm sure there's a funeral home. I'm not looking for it, amen? But I'm sure there's a funeral home that can go heal all these people. Mm -hmm. Amen? We listen to people except for the truth. What I found out about the pandemic is they believe anything except for the truth. Amen. 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 Well, the government said for us to do this, so we got to do what Romans, what is it, Romans chapter 12 or 13? We got to do exactly what that says. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know what the speed limit is here, but I've seen a 25 mile an hour zone. When I got off of the exit, guess what? I recommend you go 25. You say, why? Well, if, they, if they're allowed to do this in Illinois, they may give you a ticket. But if they tell you you can't have church, I don't think you should listen to them. Amen. You say, why? Well, God said for us to go to church. Amen. And I think God is in more more important than, I don't know what the governor's name is here. I don't want to know. I found out she's one of them things called a sodomite. Hey, she's going to go to hell if we don't pray for her. That's right. She has no business telling churches what to do. Right. Amen. Amen. And any other government or any other officials, I'm not just preaching politics. I'm just telling you, listen, hey, we better listen to what God says. Amen. Amen. We listen to everything. We listen to a bunch of yo-yos. I ain't never in all my life. Listen, hey, I go to independent Baptist. I don't go to many churches. Camp meetings, he was telling me about something the other day. I'm not against them. I wish we could have some good ones. But we got these today. Well, if you ain't in this clique, bless God, you ain't preaching for me. Hallelujah. Hey, if that's all it takes for me to get away from you is to be in your clique, I'm not interested. I don't do cliques. I don't do groups. Amen. I'll preach for this guy and I'll preach for that. I'm going to say something to you. I'm an independent Baptist preacher. I'm a Bible believer. But if the Catholic Pope was to call me today, I'd preach in the Catholic Church. You say, why? They need Jesus. Amen. 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 I got some preachers that say, well, I wouldn't do that. That's your business. Amen. The Bible says preach to all creatures. Amen. Amen. I had a dog one time. My, my children preached, and he barked when they said, "If you want to be saved, you got saved, then they baptized him." I'm sure he's going to heaven. Amen. <laughs> Am I making sense this morning? I'm just telling you. Listen, hey, be careful who you listen to. I mean, I, I, I deal with people every day, and I watch them. They get on that internet. Listen, I'd be careful listening to the internet. If you want to know who to listen to, I believe Brother Hicks has been around long enough, he probably could tell you some good ones to listen to. Amen? But listen, hey, when you're listening to them, don't worship them. Right. Amen? I'm a preacher of the gospel, but I do not want nobody worshiping me. Right. I was at a church one time, and they said, and I did, I had a pretty good number of people show up that morning for church, and he said, well, Brother Hawkins has got a lot of followers. I wish they'd quit following me. Amen. You say, why? Well, because I'm going to mess up. Amen. I've, I, I, I've been around Brother Hicks and his wife just long enough. Listen, hey, I thought I almost said something to my wife last night. Listen, hey, I've never talked to my wife like he does, his wife. <laughs> my goodness. My, my wife ought to get up and shout the victory and run a rap a few times. Amen. But I'm sure probably she probably knows a whole lot more about him than I do. You know what? We could come to church this morning and we could do it to me. We could do it to the piano player. We could do it to each and every and tear ourselves apart looking for faults. Mm -hmm. said, but I'm going to tell you something. You wouldn't have far to go find faults about me. Amen? Probably just in my little bit of length of time being up here preaching, you done figured it out. 
I ain't perfect. My wife used to think it was. The honeymoon's over. Oh, man, all that's over with. I'm just saying we better be careful who we listen to. Let me move on. My goodness, that clock didn't start moving until I did. I'm going to have to work on this stuff. Go to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, look at verses. I want to do something about this picture. Look at verses 38. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillar. And they awoke him and said unto him, Master, careth thou not that we perish? How about the doubters? Hey, be careful who you hang around when they're doubting God. Here it is, the disciples. Listen, hey, a storm come up. They got a hurricane or a tornado, whatever it was, whatever you want to say it is. And all of a sudden, hey, don't you care? We're about to perish. The ship's about to go under. We got a lot of people are doubting God today. Amen? Well, I just don't believe. I don't believe God can still save people. Well, my God's a whole lot bigger than yours is because He can still save people. Right. Well, I just don't believe God can use so and so. Well, I'm going to tell you something. What's your business of getting into somebody else's business? Amen. My wife will tell me certain things once in a while. I said, I ain't falling in the trap. I don't care. I'm not interested. Amen. You know what we've done? We've got a lot of people doubting God now because of what's going on in our country. Amen. I want to tell you something. I don't like what's going on. I pulled in the gas station yesterday. I paid five dollars and sixty-four cents for. Let me rephrase that. God paid five dollars and sixty-four cents a gallon for fuel. Guess what? My truck's full right now. I don't like it, but that's where we're at. And guess what? I can like it. I can be happy about it. I can get mad about it. Is it going to change the price of gas? You say, well, I just don't. I mean, I hear people, I, I've never in all my life seen people get on Facebook. We're paying this much for gas. I don't know how we're going to do it. I still serve the same God as Apostle Paul did. Amen. I still serve the same uh, I still serve the same God that uh, Jack Hiles or, 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 or any of the great preachers that you can think of. That God's still able. Amen. God ain't gone broke. Amen. Yeah, America has. Somebody said that we, we went from being in red, now we're in purple. I don't know what that means. Do you know what? God's still in it. Amen. Amen. I don't doubt God. You say, so you don't doubt God when you pull up at the field done? No, if God wants it in there, it's going to get there. Amen. I made it here, didn't I? Right. You know how I did that? God. Amen. We work together. We get in this thing together. And quit doubting God. Amen. Everybody's doubting whether we, which I don't know that America will ever be turned back around. But I can't tell you this much. I'm not focused on whether America can be turned around. I'm focused on lost people that need Jesus. Right. You know what I like about the tent meeting? I can't get a whole lot to come under. But there's houses all around. I'll tell you what you do this week. You go out and knock on some doors. I think they even had some flyers. Somebody made up some flyers to pass out. We need to do that. Amen? Amen. And you say, hey, we're over here at this Cornerstone Baptist Church. You see where the tent... Oh, I heard that loud mouth preacher. I hear it all the time. So just listen, hey, they may not be under the tent, but they're hearing the gospel. He was talking about them being at the four corners and looking over here and seeing the church and seeing the sign. Listen, hey, they're not going to have an excuse, but they're not going to have no excuse. You say, why? They hurt. They will hear by some Wednesday night when the things are shut down and it's all uh, done and we say our last amen. They're going to hear it around here. Amen. Say, what are they going to hear? Jesus. But I'm going to tell you right now, here's what we got to do. You want revival? Listen, we've scheduled a revival meeting, tent meeting, however you want to say it. But listen, I didn't bring revival in my, in, in my uh, briefcase. You say, why? I can't. Right. Did you know revival has to start with an individual? Right. I can't give Brother uh, Hicks a uh, 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 revival. He can't give it to me. Amen. Now, we can tell you how to do it. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people which are called by my name, will humble themselves. Amen. You know, we got a lot of people like willing to humble themselves. Mm -hmm. 
We got a lot of people ain't willing to turn a wicked way. You you calling me wicked preacher? No, God did that. What did He say in Jeremiah? Our hearts was desperately wicked. Amen. We are wicked people. Listen, hey, if we don't draw nigh to God and we don't stay close to God and we don't stay faithful to God and we don't stay in God's Word and we don't stay in the prayer closet, we're wicked. Amen. Amen. So, hey, who are you listening to? You listen to them doubters? Oh, God can't. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now. If you want to talk about negative? That is negative. Knowing that God can't. Amen? That's right. God's still able? I just preached at a church in Harrisburg, uh, Illinois, is here last Wednesday night, and, and the preacher, I told the preacher, said, where are you going next? And I told him where I was coming, and he said, I preached at that church years ago when there was a good crowd of people. Listen, I'm going to say something to you. It can happen again in 2022. Amen? Amen. God is still able, but what we got to do is be willing to let go and let God and give in and sacrifice, come out of our comfort zone. You'll never get revival in your comfort zone. Right. You'll never get close to God in your comfort zone. Listening to the wrong crowd. Listen, hey, I don't listen to doubters. You say, why? I was talking to a preacher. And he called me to send him some literature. You say, well, did you do it? No. I mean, this guy's probably, by, by listening to his voice, he said he'd been in the ministry 40-some years, so I'm assuming he's probably in his 60s. I'm saying, hey, here's somebody with some wisdom. Here's one of them gray-haired men. He says, you've got to realize we're living in a different time, and God ain't going to do nothing today. I know the Bible says not to rebuke them, but I sure wanted to. In the name of God. Amen. I didn't say nothing to him. I said, okay, sir, you have a great day. and hung up the phone. I ain't sending no literature. I'm not sending no literature. You say, why? I'm not listening to that crap. Right. You say, why? My God's bigger than he is. Amen. God, my God's bigger than the world's God. My God's still able. Amen. Amen. I don't I don't want to hang around the doubters. That's what that's what they was doing there in that store. They was hanging around the doubters. I don't want to do that. Give me just a second. We'll get to the next page. Go to Luke chapter 9, 7. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Listen, look in verses 19. And John calling unto his two, the two of his disciples sent them to sent, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that could should come, or look we for another? How about uh, people that want to discourage you? You ever, you ever been around that crowd and they just want to discourage you? You know what? You remember John. You, what did Jesus say about John? There's no greater man that walked on earth than John the Baptist. But here we are in Luke chapter 7. All of a sudden, John the Baptist is doubting God. John the Baptist is discouraged. You say, why? He was hanging around the discouraged crowds. Amen. You, you listen, hey, we're supposed to encourage one another. Ain't that what the Bible says? Right. But today we got people that want to discourage you, want to tear you down. Hey, thank God John repented and got back. But I want to tell you something. Hey, I don't want to be this. Listen, hey, discouragement is coming from the devil. Right. And the devil's crap. Don't be discouraged when you just see a handful of people. Hey, and if nobody more than what's here comes, hey, if Paul and Silas was two people, and what did the Bible say? He, they turned the world upside down. I don't know what the population of Salem is, but I think we've got enough people underneath the tent to turn Salem upside down. Amen. Amen. Yeah, don't get discouraged. Listen, you say, well, there's just not nothing going on around here. Well, we got to make it happen. His, uh, behind his pulpit right there, proofs in the pudding. You know what? I do not think you need to pray about passing out a gospel track. Amen. Right. I, don't think that's, I don't think there's no need whatsoever to pray over passing this track out. You say, why? There's the gospel in this. But I can't tell you this much, you should pray over the track. I do not think that it's a, I don't think you should pray and say, Lord, should we go out and knock on doors and pass out flyers and pass out tracks and invite people to Jesus? I don't think you need to pray about that. Matter of fact, the Bible says go. 
Amen. That says talking about Jerusalem. Guess what? Salem is your Jerusalem. Right. Amen. You know what your preacher needs? He needs some encouragement. Amen. I'm not saying this because he talked my ears off yesterday. Amen. <laughs> Do you know what? You know, I go to a lot of churches and a lot of preachers don't get no fellowship. Right. Amen. They need fellowship. Right. They listen, hey, whether you like these messages or not, lie to him anyway. Hey, you've done a great job, amen. <laughs> Give him a big head, swell it up. Amen. You need to be encouraging to one another. You say, well, all we see is the same crowd every week. Hey, at least it's showing back up. Amen. I go to church and people talk about, listen, hey, we're almost in a mega church here and under the tent this morning compared to some churches I go to. I'm headed to New York. Here in just a few weeks, Lord's a willing, the gas prices don't go up no more. Amen. <laughs> and I'm going to preach at a church. And unless some visitors come, they'll have 10 or less. You say, what are you going to do? I'm going to preach like we have a thousand. If what else are we going to do? We're going to pass out flyers. We're going to invite people to the revival. And we're going to go for two weeks. Amen. I was talking to a pre I was the preacher over in Harrisonburg. He said, Years ago, he's 92 years old. He said, years ago, I did not schedule a meeting unless it was two weeks to a month. You know why preachers won't do that no more? Nobody won't come. Amen. We get around the discovery. Well, I just don't know if we can do this or not. Let me tell you something. You're not going to do nothing without God. All right. I don't know if you've, any of you have heard this song or not. I can't even walk without Him holding my hand. I can't get out of the bed without Him getting me up in the morning. Amen. Amen. You're talking about stumbling. Listen, hey, when I try to do it on my own, I do a lot of it. When I hang around and I get into that part and stay in that little mode and I'm discouraged and the gospel tent's just sitting in the trailer and nothing's happening, hey, I'm just going to tell you right now, i got to get my eyes on Jesus. That's what happened to Peter. Peter got his eyes off Jesus. He got his eyes on the storm. Hey, you need to tell your storm about Jesus instead of telling your uh, Jesus about your storm. You say, why? Jesus is it. Amen. You know what? We go to complaining. I'd be very careful. I was talking to somebody the other day, and just listen, hey, Jesus didn't even have a house to sleep in. Right. Jesus, listen, I, I love people. I love doing what I'm doing. But if I had to walk or ride a donkey, and especially ride a donkey, I wouldn't show up. I rode a horse one time about nine years ago, I guess, maybe almost ten years ago. I'm just now learning how to walk again. Listen, I don't want to be discouraged. You say, why? That's what the world wants. You know why I can't quit? I've got too many people watching me. I tell people once in a while, I told my wife, I said, you're going to have to rent a tent when I die because it ain't big enough. People's going to come from all over the world. But they're not coming to see me. They're coming to make sure I'm dead. <laughs> They're going to make sure, hey, listen, hey, we're going to make sure because if you ain't, we're going to kill it. But hey, I seen something on Facebook the other day. I liked it. I told my wife, I said, when they all depart from the funeral, I want you to text every one of them and say, thanks for coming to my funeral. Amen. <laughs> Some of y'all get that after a while. Go to Luke chapter 15. Am I making sense this morning? It is still morning, isn't it? Luke chapter 15. Look at verses 12. And the, young, and, and, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, I give me the portions of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto him his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance and rise his living. What about listening to losers? Let me just tell you something. You do not come up and leave just, uh, just within an hour of finding out Find that I, I want what I belong to me. You hang around the wrong people. Amen? You know what happens? I've had family members. Listen, hey, I'm going to tell you something. Be careful with your young people having cell phones. Right. I'm seeing it going on every which way. Young people. And listen, hey, I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about Christian young people. Amen? You know what happened to the prodigal son? He was around some losers. That's right. You better stay away from losers. Listen, let me tell you something. A loser will tell you church ain't worth it. That's right. 
The losers will tell you, listen, hey, we got plenty of time. How much time do you think you've got? Amen. I'm just going to say this much. The preacher was talking about the coming of the Lord this morning and prophecy and everything. We're 2,000 years closer than we've ever been. That's right. I don't know if we got another month. I don't know if we got another year. I don't know if we got another day. I have no idea. I'm not going to doubt God on that. I just know it's very soon. And I'm not going to say much about this because I'm going to preach something on this line. But I woke up this morning and a preacher friend of mine, thank God, according to his testimony, he shouted out in victory. But uh, Saturday, uh, uh, Friday morning he got up and uh, he was getting his daughter went into the water and he went in a little bit too deep in the lake up in New York and he's no longer here to tell any more stories. So hey, the Lord may not come today. The Lord may not come tomorrow. But you might. I don't know. I don't read. I know people don't read the paper anymore, and I guess everything is on technology now. But I can't say it. It's the dead men section is what I call it. And you can turn to that page in your on your cell phone or however you look at your news now on that, and you would find out that somebody possibly has already died in Salem just this month, the ten days being into July. You say what happened? They were listening to losers. And listen, hey. I just want you to know something. You do not have to be old to die anymore. I remember I was coming to Illinois the first time I'd ever come, and I went over to Milan, Illinois, somewhere close on the line of, I'm not crossing the right there, being in Iowa, whatever you call that place. And I preached a revival there, and when I showed up, the preacher them, I went somewhere, the preacher them says, we'll be there a little later on. We have gone to a funeral to a 20-some year old. By her testimony, she was saved. And later on that week, they had to go to another funeral, another 20-year-old, and by her testimony, she's frying in hell like sausage by doing the things of the world and not obeying God and not being born again, saved by the grace of God. So listen, man, you don't have to be old to die. Amen? I wouldn't be listening to losers. You know what losers do? They lose. I'd start, win I'd start, talk I'd start listening to winners. Amen? Who's a winner? The ones on Jesus' side. The ones that know who Jesus is. Amen. The ones that invite you to a church that preaches the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. My sister used to, now she's a teacher in the school, but she used to be uh, drive, a, drive a school bus for the uh, handicapped children. And when they got to talking or whatever, and my sister says, I'm a Baptist, and she said, I used to be one until the Jehovah's Witness Brought me the truth. Listen, hey, Jehovah's Witnesses are liars. Right. Amen. Right. I don't hate the Jehovah's Witness people. I hate their religion. Mm -hmm. I was just up. I was just this year. Now I've known about Mormonism because I was raised in church or whatever. But I was introduced to the real deal this year. I done a revival in a Cedar City, Utah, and we went out, and I, I got up behind the pulpit, and I said, "I want to meet a Mormon." Guess what? I met two of them. You know what? I listened to them, and I listened to them, and I told I told one of the guys. I said, "Listen, if Joseph Smith could come back today, there would be no more Mormonism." I said, "But he can't." And I said, "So y'all going to continuously carry on the lies that Mormonism is the greatest thing, and that's where you're going to get to go. You get your different kingdoms." Listen, hey, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm just going to heaven. Right. You say why? Because I'm born again, saved by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'd be careful listening to the losers. That's what happened to the to the to the rich young ruler. But guess what? Or not the rich young ruler, but the uh, prodigal son. But guess what? He came back to his own. He came back to his senses. Showed up. Amen. Go to Luke chapter twenty. Luke chapter twenty. Look in verses forty-five. Then in the audience of all the people, he said unto his disciples, Beware of the scribes which desire to walk in long robes and long greetings in the market and the highest seats in the synagogue and the chief rulers of the feast which devour widows' houses and for a show make long prayers, the same shall receive greater damnation. How about Pharisees? Now if you know anything about Pharisees, listen, hey, 
The Bible says, uh, uh, there's a song that they sing out there. The, Phar the Pharisees are not fair, you see. And if you'll listen and you'll read about it, and if you know anything about your Bible, they was always condemning Jesus. Well, that's what they'll do to you. They'll condemn you for being in church. You mean to tell me you go to Cornerstone Baptist Church where they believe the truth about the death, burial, and resurrection and the preacher gets up and he shouts and he cries the victory? Yep. Man, I'll tell you right now, they'll say, oh my goodness, I wouldn't be caught dead over there. But they'll go over here to these dead churches. Amen? I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you how I know Jesus' church ain't dead because Jesus is ahead of it and he's alive. Right. Hey, the Pharisees are out to what? They'd love to see Corn <laughs> the Pharisees of Salem would love to see the church of Cornerstone Baptist Church close the doors. Mm -hmm. Whenever Brother Hicks came and it was down to the park, listen, hey, the t no, no money to pay the bills and, and nobody here to help pay it out and, and everybody's left all of a sudden. Left. You say, why did that happen? They was hanging around the Pharisees. They said, oh, Cornerstone ain't going to make it. How long have you been here? Three years? Possibly three years. Still going. Amen. You say, why? Because that's God's will. We know what the Pharisees said. Well, listen, I, I, I've been doing tent ministry for about, uh, far, I've had it for about seven years, but we've been doing a lot more in the last three or four years, I guess, setting it up. And we get people come by, they blow their horn, they say crazy things, they cuss us. Guess what? I like it. You say, why? <laughs> At least they know who we are. But you know what? I found out something about the Pharisees and I found out about something about the lost. Hey, they know when they want a prayer to answer, they don't go to the Catholic Church. They call up Brother Hicks and say, hey, I need a prayer request. Amen? There's a, there's a guy in uh, Maine. He, he was one of those that would drive by. This was been year, many years ago. And they set the tent up, and I think it was five years into it. These, this couple would come by, and then they even ha end up having children. And they started blowing a horn and, and calling the people names underneath the tent. Now he's a deacon of the, ch of the church. you got to be careful. Hey, we've got to reach the lost. Pharisees, listen, hey, the Pharisees would love to see something. So love to see this. Let us get discouraged. Nobody showed up. Hey, you know what? If two of you get right with God and get your phone fire with God, it'll be worth it. If one of you, listen, if it comes down, what is it? Whenever Abraham was talking about Sodom, he said, if I can get down and find ten righteous, will you hold it up and not destroy it? He couldn't find one. I wonder if God could find one under the tent this morning. Hey, listen, I understand some of you come here every day. You're doing things for the church. You're always at the church. And you ain't got time for this and that and the other. Listen, hey, just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Amen. Don't let the Pharisees get to you. Amen. You say, why? It's worth what we're doing. It may not. Listen, hey, if, if, if Brother Kenneth, I, mean, I don't know why I want to call you Kenneth. I mean, change your name at least. Hallelujah for me this week. He's Kenneth until I leave. Amen. If he never gets more than 30 people, guess what? That'll be what God wants him to have. And if he can get 30 people to do something for God, whoa, it'd be a whole lot better than having a thousand headaches. Amen. Amen. I thought about, listen, hey, today in the hour that we're living in, 30 people is almost a mega church today. Right. People's not interested. I understand they ain't interested in God. Do you know what? But if they pass this sign, and they pass this tent, and they hear this, and maybe I'm gone. Listen, hey, if, if it all closes down on Wednesday night, and we take a tent down, and we pack her up, and the Hawkins go to the next place, hey, and something, I hope revival don't end on Wednesday nights. I hope that's the beginning part of it. Hey, we get fired up, we get stirred up, we get our eyes on Jesus, forget about the Pharisees, hey, go let them do their own thing, amen? And let us do what God wants to do. Hey, Little is much when God is in it. Yeah. Then go to John chapter 3. I got uh, just a couple of scriptures to turn to here. Talking about who we listening to. John chapter 3. Look at verses 3. You hear what the Bible says? And Jesus answered and said, Now this is Jesus talking. We better listen unto him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Look at verses 5. Jesus answered 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the man be born again, and, and be born again, born, man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to say something to you. You must be born again this morning. You say, who said that? Jesus. And if Jesus says it, we better be paying attention. Right. Now I'm going to say something to you. You say, I'm born again. I'm saved. What are you doing with it? See, when you get saved, that don't mean that that's it. If that was it, then what would happen is that we'll pop out of here. Amen? But you go to Acts chapter 1 and verses 8, and I'm not going to go there for the sake of time, but it talks about being filled with the Spirit of God, get God all over us, pray over it, and then go. You know who's a missionary under this kid? Every born again born believer. That's right. Everybody that's born again, saved by the grace of God, ought to have a gospel track in their pocket. Ought to have a Bible close by. You say, why? The world needs us to be a light. Matthew, Matthew chapter 5 says we're the light of the world. Amen. I'm not going to turn to that, but John chapter 14, verse 6 says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And then Matthew chapter 20, 19, verse 26, you can write these down if you'd like to and read them later on. It says that all things are possible with God. Amen? All things are possible with God. How close are you to God this morning? When's the last time you spent a few hours or quite a few minutes on your knees praying to God. You say, how long should I pray? Well, uh, here's what I can go by Scripture. And I'm just going by Scripture. Jesus prayed an hour. He asked His disciples, said, can you not pray with me for one hour? we got 24 hours in a day. I'm going to tell you what the problem is. We're not using our time wisely. That's all right. Every morning, I'm gonna tell you what you should do. Every morning before you take off, because you got, and you go home and read Ephesians chapter six, starting in verses ten, and read down through there. I recommend you as a born again believer. I'm, I'm sure Brother Hicks has probably even read through that, and maybe even preached on that since he's been here. But you better get, you better get armed up with God. You say why? This world is after you. The devil. Jesus told Peter, said the devil is out to sit you. And if he was after Peter, don't think he ain't after you. You're going to stand for right and you're going to get up and proclaim the Word of God and proclaim who Jesus Christ is. The devil is after you. Amen. Don't ask you this morning who are we going to My wife's coming to the piano. I want to give just a little bit of an invitation. They all, we got all we got carpet here. I tell you right now, if you truly if you truly want revival, I'm going to tell you, there's only one way, one way to get it. Your husband can't give it to you. Your wife can't give it to you. You gotta give it to you. You gotta get it.